Okay, so here we are. This is uh, quiz number two. And um, I'm going to walk you through solving the problems. Here's question number one. And so how do we do it? It's showing a box plot. First question, um, what quarter has the smallest spread of data? What quarter has the smallest spread of data? So is, that just means as you're looking, this is the first quarter between here and here. This is the second quarter. It's like a football game or a basketball game. This is the third quarter between here and here. And this is the fourth quarter between here and here. That's what a box plot does is breaks the data up into four quarters, like a football game or basketball game. So which quarter has the smallest spread, which is the narrowest? This quarter, huh? So Q2, the second quarter. However, they say that. Oops, let's move on. What is that spread? Like, how far is it? How far is it from here to here? Well, it's 2. From 8 to 10? That's a gap of 2, huh? What quarter has the largest spread? Well, that'd be the fourth quarter, huh? From there to there. And what is that spread? From 20 to 38, if you subtract those 38 minus 20, you get 18. Okay, let's go to a fresh screen. Um, where are we at? Uh, find the interquartile range. So the IQR, the interquartile range, that means between the quartiles. Remember, this is the end of quarter one. This is the, uh, this is the median, half time. This is the end of quarter three. Right? Remember how that works? So, so I hope that's not confusing. This is the first quarter, and this is the end of the first quarter. Right? The first quarter goes from 3 to 8. So Q1 is the end of the first quarter. Quarter 2 goes from 8 to 10. So halftime is the end, is the median, um, which is the end of the second quarter. Right, like in a football game or a basketball game, halftime is at the end of the second quarter. And then here's the third quarter. At the end of the third quarter, we call that Q3. That's the number 20. End of the third quarter. And here's the fourth quarter. And this is the uh, end of the whole game, the maximum value. Over here, by the way, this is the minimum value, the lowest value among all the data. Okay, so what's the interquartile range? That's always Q3 minus Q1 which is 20 minus 8, which is 12. 12 is the interquartile range. It means from the end of the first quarter to the end of the third quarter, from there to there, that's the IQR. In other words, it's the width of the box. Do you see that? You know, from right here to right here, it's the width of the box. It's the box width is what it is. Um, which interval has the most data in it? Which interval has the most data in it? Well, okay, well that's kind of a tricky question. Let me, uh, let me go to a fresh screen here and let's answer that question. So which interval has the most data in it? Now, I can't see the multiple choice options on this screen, but I've seen it before, and in every problem, it changes the numbers. Let me give you some options. A, here, I'll bring it up here. Here's the type of options that they usually give you on this question. They'll say something like, um, like what? They'll say three to seven, or they'll say, um, 7 to 10, or they'll say 10 to 20, or here, no, let me change that. They'll say uh, 20 to 38, or they'll say um, 39 to 100. 
So there's some good options. That's the kind of options they give you. So which interval has the most data in it? Now, what do we mean by most data? That's different than spread. Spread just means how far from number to number. If they just ask us which interval has the biggest spread, you know, clearly that one, 39 to 100. That's the widest interval. But that's not what they're saying. They're saying most data. Data. What do they mean most data? Well, they're asking if you really understand what a box plot is. Remember, a box plot is the first, it breaks it into four quarters. First quarter, second quarter, third quarter, fourth quarter. So it breaks all the data into four quarters. Now, what data? What do I mean? Well, maybe these are quiz scores. Let me try to make it real for you. Maybe these are quiz scores. And this is the min, this is the worst quiz score was a three. The maximum, the highest quiz score anybody got was a 38. That was a top score on the quiz, right? Um, Q1, think about a football game or basketball game. Q1, that means between 3 and 8 is one quarter. How much of the football game or the basketball game happens in the first quarter? Well, 25%, right? Happens between 3 and 8 because that's the first quarter. That means 25% of all the game happens in that quarter. Well, that's what it means for these quizzes. 25% of all the students' quiz scores were between 3 and 8. Those were the lowest scoring quarter of all the students. So the lowest 25% of all the students got a score between 3 and 8. So there's a whole bunch of students that got a score between 3 and 8. 25% of all the students, 25% of all the data values, all the quiz scores were between 3 and 8. And but 25% uh, were between 8 and 10. How do I know? Because that's the second quarter. See that dotted line right there? That marks the, the halftime. That's halftime. So this is the second quarter. And then this next chunk between... 10 and 20. So that means, let me go back. Between 8 and 10, just that narrow range between 8 and 10 is 25% of all the students in the class. 25% of all the data values. And then quarter 3, between 10 and 20, 25% of all the students got a test score between 10 and 20. And finally, the fourth quarter, between 20 and 38, right there, 25% of all the students scored between 20 and 38 on the quiz. And the maximum score was 38. Nobody got above 38. All right, let's go to it. Basically, the, 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 uh, most, the, the most data, well, well let, let, let's, go, let's take it option by option. 3 through 7. Where is 3 through 7? Coming back up here. 3 through 7. Uh, 3 starts here. 7 is here. That's you know, from 3 to 7 is right there. That's not even, that's less than 25%. How do I know? It's less than 25% of all the students, all the quiz scores. Well, because it's less than a whole interval. It only goes from 3 to 7. The first quarter ends at 8, right? Remember, 25% of all the scores are between 3 and 8. So that ends before 8. So that's less than 25%. I don't care what the numbers themselves are. I care where they are in the box plot. It's between 3 and 8 that has 25%. So between 3 and 7 is less than 25%. How about 7 to 10? What's, what's between 7 and 10? Well, 7 and 10. Oh, notice that's more than a whole quarter, right? Because between 8 and 10... Is, a, is the second quarter is 25% of all the data. So that's more than 25% of all the data. That's got more than the other interval. Even though you go, well, yeah, but 7 to 10 is only 3, and 3 to 7 is only 4. That doesn't matter. That does not matter. We know that every quarter has one fourth of all the students in it. So between three and eight is is one fourth of all the students. And between eight and ten is one fourth. So if you go from seven to ten, you're getting more than twenty five percent, right? Because eight to ten has twenty five percent. So seven to ten has more than twenty five percent. How about twenty to thirty eight? Twenty to thirty eight. That's exactly. 25%, right? Because that is the top one-fourth of all the students 
got between 20 and 30. That's exactly one-fourth of all the students, 25%. And what about 39 to 100? That's out here, 39 to 100? Nobody. There's nobody that got a quiz score 39 to 100. This is no one got in that zone. Nobody got above 38. 38 was the max. So which interval has the most data? Less than 25, more than 25, exactly 25, or no one? Well, this one, huh? More than 25%. 7 to 10, because that's more than a whole interval. That's more than a whole quarter on the box plot. Last question. What value could represent the 53rd percentile? The 53rd. Now, you got to know, they're testing if you know what the 53rd percentile really means. That's the question. What is the 53rd percentile? The 53rd percentile, that means 53% of the way through the data. So like if I said I'm watching the football game, um, I'm at the 53rd percentile. That means I'm just past halftime. I'm 53% of the way through the game. More than 50% of the game is over. I'm just past 50%. I'm 53% of the way through the data, through the game, through the whatever. So where could the 53rd percentile be? Well, they're going to give you, again, i got to tell you about the different options. They're not showing them here, but I, I'll tell you what they, what they like to do. Here's what they like to do. They like to give you options like this. They'll give you something like um, 7, and something like 11, and something like 9, and something like 21. Which of those numbers could represent the 53rd percentile? Well, remember, 53rd percentile, 53% of the way through the data that's just past half, just past 50%. So which of these numbers is just past half? Let's go back up to the box plot and take a look. So 7, where's that? That's right here. Um, is that past half? Where, where is half? It's, I guess that's what we got to be clear on, huh? Remember, this is half. This is halftime right here. That dotted line, that's the median, remember? Because this, this is the first quarter, 25% well, here, of the data. This is the first quarter, second, into the second quarter is halftime, right? Third quarter, fourth quarter. So this is halftime, 10. So we're looking for a number just past 10. There it is. It's the eleven. So it's not that, not that, not that. It's the 11, because that's just past the 10, just past halftime. 53% of the way through the data is just past 50%. There we go. Okay, so let's, uh, let's take a look at this number, too. This is tricky. This is, again, one more time, this is the lengths of spiders found on a forest floor. Okay, let's make sure we understand this graph. That means... Um, some of the spiders were 7 millimeters long. How many spiders? 80. Frequency means how many, right? So make sure you understand what this bar graph is showing. 80 spiders were 7 mi millimeters long. 40 spiders were what? 6 long. This is 5, 4, 3, this is 8. 9, 10, and 11 millimeters long. So 40 spiders were 6 millimeters long, and 40 spiders were also 8 millimeters long. And then something less than 40, I don't know, maybe 25, I'm just guessing, are 5 millimeters long, and the same thing for 9 millimeters long, etc. Down here, the shortest kind of spider, 2 millimeters long, it looks like there's, I don't know, maybe 10 spiders or 8 or 9 that are 2 millimeters long and same amount that are really long, 12 millimeters long. So most spiders are average right in the middle, and then less spiders are really big or really small, 12 millimeters long or 2 millimeters long. Okay, here come the questions. This histogram is a pro. They want me to check each that are true. There's not just one right answer. There's several 
things that are true here. The histogram is approximately normal. Yeah, that's true, right? You see this graph? It, it looks like a bell curve. Approximately normal just means it's got a, it's big in the middle, it's small on the sides, it's humped in the middle. It's got a big mountain in the middle. Most spiders are average. Some are, you know, there's a less that are really big and less that are really small. Looks like a bell curve. It's normally distributed, meaning it does a bell shape. That's how things are normally distributed, meaning the middle is average, and most people, most things, most spiders, most men's shoe sizes, most anything is average. Yes. A relative frequency histogram would also have the same shape, just a different scale on the vertical axis. Yes, that's true. Why? Well, because a relative frequency chart is, is just in terms of percentages. So in other words, over here on the y-axis, let me kind of erase this stuff. Over here on the y-axis, instead of how many, like 80 spiders are 7 millimeters in length, and 40 spiders are, what, 6 millimeters in length or 8 millimeters in length, we would have what percent of all the spiders are the various lengths. But you're still going to have the, the biggest bar, which is the biggest number of sp spiders, 80 spiders, is also going to be the biggest percentage of spiders. And the smallest number of spiders that were 2 millimeters is also going to be the smallest percentage of spiders. So it's going to look exactly the same. It's just going to have percentage. So a relative frequency chart just changes to percentage. The same, it has the same look as the original. Um, let's go on. The histogram is skewed left. No. No, that's not true. Uh, left would be like this. You know, if it's that'd be that'd be skewed left. Maybe I can put it right here. This is skewed left. No, it's not. The mean is greater than the median. No, it's not. Um, if you look at this graph, here, let me get rid of this. The mean and the median are, are both in the in the very middle. This this is the mean. It's also the median. It's the very middle. It's the very middle of the graph, like that. Very, very middle of the graph. Um, yeah, we'll just leave it at that. Um, if there had been only 40 spiders of length 7 millimeters instead of 80, then the new standard deviation would be larger than, than the original. Is that true? So if there had only been 40 in the middle, so if, if this number that's in the middle here, if this was stopped right here, get rid of this part, right? And it just stopped right here like that. There was only 40 in the middle instead of going way up to 80. What would that do? Tell me, does that mean the data is more spread out or more in the center, right? If, if instead you had it like this, let me just redraw it, like that, right? That's what it would look like if you made it 80 in the middle. This is more centralized, isn't it? It's not more spread out. Uh, I'm sorry, it's not more centralized. It's less centralized, meaning it's more spread out. It is more spread out. I'm getting it backwards. Right? There's, there's less in the center now. See over here? This is more in the center. You know, when it, when it has that bar, when it has that, when it, when it goes all the way up to 80, that's more in the center. So if you have more in the center, that means a lower standard deviation. When you have less in the center, that means it's a higher standard deviation because it's more spread out. Remember, standard deviation. That's what they're testing here if you understand standard deviation. Standard deviation higher is, is a measure of spread. It's a measure of how spread out the data is. 
So if your data is more spread out, right, more spread out, that's a higher standard deviation. If the data is more in the center, that's a lower standard deviation because it's more in the center. It's not spread out. So yeah, if they made it like this and they made it just come down to 40 instead of being way up here at 80, then it would be less in the center. Therefore, if it's less in the center, it's more spread out, that'd be a higher standard deviation. That would be, would be larger. Yep, that's true. The next one, the majority of the spiders are 7 millimeters low. Well, actually, you know what? Let me, let me go back. I want, I, maybe I didn't answer this question well enough. The uh, mean is greater than the median. No, it's not true, as I said, but let me give you a better reason. What would it look like if it was? If you had a data set like this that had a you know, skewed to the left, the mean, the mean is the balance point. It's the balance point. Where would you put your finger for this kind of... Where would you put your finger? Like if, if this was a big pile of Play-Doh or whatever, and you wanted to put your finger somewhere on the bottom to balance the whole thing so it wouldn't tip over, where would you put your finger? Mm, about right there. That's the balance point, right? About right there, maybe. Put your finger so it would balance. Okay. So that's the mean. That's where the mean would be. Now, the median, the median, on the other hand, the median is um, the middle as they're stacked. Uh, the middle, it's kind of the, it's more like the middle, it's the middle sideways. Let's say it that way. It's the middle sideways. So the median would be more like here. Because that's the middle of the sideways. In that case, the median would be less than the mean in that kind of case. But in our case, it's perfectly symmetrical. So not. The mean is not greater than the median. They're the same. It's perfectly symmetrical. All right, getting on down. The majority of spiders are 7 millimeters long. Majority means more than... 50%, doesn't it? Isn't that what majority means? More than 50%? Is that true? No. Let's look back and see. You see, how many spiders, let me erase some of this, how many spiders have, um, are 7 millimeters? Well, 80. 80 spiders, are, right? This, this bar contains, goes up to 80 spiders. Is that more than half of all the spiders? No way. There's 40 spiders right here and 40 spiders right there. So there's so this is 80 spiders, this is 40, this is 40, this is something like 30, I'm just guessing, 30. See, already that 80 is not more than half, is it? It's not a majority, it's not more than half of the spiders, because there's all, because this is already 80 and this is another 60. More than half of the spiders are not the 7 millimeter spiders in the middle here. This 80 spiders in the middle is not more than half of all the spiders because I've already got more than 80, 40, 40, 30, 30, and I haven't even counted these other areas. More than half of the spiders are the other ones that are not in the middle. So, no, no, the majority of spiders are not 7 millimeters. It's less than, it's less than 50% that are in the middle there. Finally, a cumulative frequency histogram would have the same shape. No way. Cumulative, cumulative means it adds up. Cumulative has to always get bigger, 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 bigger. It grows to the right. As you're going to the right, a cumulative one has to add up. It has to accumulate like a pile. It wouldn't look like this. It wouldn't have a hump in the center. It would have to get bigger and bigger to the right. So that's a no. So those are some tricky questions. Question three, uh, without calculating, what might be the standard deviation for this data? Now, remember what standard deviation means. It means, so what is standard deviation? Average distance from the middle. Average distance from the middle. So here's the middle, okay? The, the what number is the for what so seven millimeters is the average spider length. What's the biggest spider? Twelve millimeters. What's the smallest spider? 
two millimeters. All the spiders we found, the average spider was seven millimeters. The biggest spider we found was 12 millimeters. The smallest spider we found is two millimeters. This is what? Five millimeters bigger. This is five millimeters smaller than the average. That's the furthest from the middle, right? The very biggest spider and the very smallest spiders are the furthest from the middle, and that's five millimeters. So the standard deviation must be less than five. It must be less than five, right? Because it's the average distance from the middle. And the, the biggest distance from the middle, right, we see that the biggest distance from the middle, the biggest distance from the middle is 5, right? The, the points that are furthest from the middle, the right edge and the left edge, are only 5 from the middle. So the standard deviation is the average distance from the middle. It must be less than 5, so it can't be any of these. It must be the 2. That, that's possibly the standard deviation. That's the only number there that's even possible. Okay, question four. So we're talking about on this one, uh, Scott, Maria, and Chad, there are three members of a hiring committee. Uh, they're hiring a new director for tutoring services. And this shows how they scored the last applicant, Paige, on a scale from one to ten, with ten being the most qualified. Um, so Scott... His score for Paige is a 9. He really liked Paige. He gave her a 9. Now, the mean for Scott, about you know, he had a there were a bunch of other candidates that Scott also ranked, and his mean, his average, was 7.8. So on average, he ranked candidate 7.8. So he liked Paige better than average. His standard deviation, like the the, the variation you know, the average distance from the middle for Scott's rankings is 1.2. Maria, she only gave Paige a 6. She didn't like Paige as much. On average, she ranked candidate 6.5, so she put Paige below her average ranking. And she only had a 0.5 standard deviation, so her rankings did not deviate much from the center. Chad, he gave Paige a 7. On average, Chad, for all the candidates he ranked, he, his average ranking was 5.4, so he liked Paige better than average. And the standard deviation on Chad's rankings were only 0.8, so he didn't deviate much from ranking to ranking. The average distance from the middle for his rankings was 0.8. Question is, who ranked Paige the highest relative... Here it's the question. Which committee member ranked Paige the highest relative to the other members' individual scoring patterns. You see, because you might just say, well, well, Scott did. He gave her a 9. That's higher. Well, maybe, but Scott gave a lot of people high rankings. You know what I mean? Scott's average ranking was 7.8. He really liked these people. This is only 1.2. Page only got a 1.2 ranking higher than he gave people on average. What about... Whereas Chad, yes, he only ranked page of seven, but that but he gave low rankings in general. That's that's one point six above his average ranking. So it seems like Chad liked her even more. He just tends to rank people lower, and Scott tends to rank people higher. So do you see? Do you see what the question is? It's not just who ranked page higher, like absolute number. That would be nine. That would be Scott. But it's who ranked higher compared to how they rank, right? Relative to their scoring pattern. Well, how do we do that? Whenever they give you a question, remember this for exam number one. Whenever they give you a question and it says relative to, you know, whatever, blah, 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 that means Z-score. That's what Z-score is for. It's to figure out a ranking within the system. So let's do, so we have a z-score for Scott. What's the z-score formula? It's the score he ranked minus the mean that he usually ranked over his standard deviation. So let's do Scott. Let me get rid of all these numbers here. So what did Scott give her? He gave her a 9. 
What did he give on average? 7.8, that's his mean, over his standard deviation, 1.2. If you calculate that, that's 1.2 over 1.2. That's 1. So Scott gave her a z-score 1. What does that mean? That means Scott ranked her 1 standard deviation above his average, right? He ranked her one point, remember from here to there is 1.2. He ranked her 1.2 higher than he ranked candidates on average, which is exactly one standard deviation for Scott. He ranked her one standard amount better than he ranked other candidates. Let's do the next person, Maria. Same thing, same formula. Score minus mean over standard deviation. So um, she gave um, a score of 6 minus a mean of 6.5 over her standard deviation, 0.5. So that's negative 0.5 over 0.5. That's negative 1. So she did one standard de de deviation below average. Right? She, she ranked page at 6, and she usually gave 6.5. That was her average. So she ranked page low, lower than the average candidate by exactly one standard deviation. Because, yeah, let's move on. So now um, Chad gave a 7. I'm sorry. Oh, I mixed those up. <laughs> Man, I didn't know they put them out of order. They're trying to trick us. Okay, that's Maria. <laughs> Now let's do Chad. They're checking. They're changing the order here. All right, let's do Chad now. Chad, this is Chad, and this purple one here is Maria, and the red one is Scott. All right, getting back to it. Chad, what's, what's Chad's score? 7 minus the mean, 5.4 over Chad's standard deviation. So what is that? 1.6 over 0.8. I do that in your calculator, you get 2. He ranked her two standard deviations above his average ranking. So Chad liked her best. Who ranked her highest? Chad. Chad is the right answer. I should bubble in the Chad bubble there. Chad ranked her highest because he ranked her two standard deviations above what he ranked people on average, right? He ranked her 1.6 higher than his average ranking, and his standard deviations, 0.8, that's two times 8 is 16. Two standard deviations. So he, he liked her quite a bit better than average. Two whole standard deviations above what he typically ranked people. So Chad really liked her the best compared to the other people. Even though Scott gave a higher number, Scott gave everybody a high number. That's what Z-score, see how valuable Z-score is? It allows us to compare rankings in different systems. Scott has his own system, Maria has her own system, Chad has in his own system of ranking. So within their systems, really Chad liked Paige the best because he gave her way higher than he gave other people in his ranking system. Two standard amounts above the normal way he ranks. So Chad. So any kind you get a question on exam number one that says relative to, think about z-score. That's what they want you to do. Okay, question five. An elementary school class ran one mile, average of 11 minutes, standard deviation three. Rachel, a student in that class, ran one mile in eight minutes. Okay. A junior high class ran one mile in nine minutes on average with standard deviation two. Kinji, a student in that class, ran the one mile in 8.5 minutes. Okay, so that, so that was the elementary school, the junior high, now the high school. A one mile average of seven minutes, standard deviation four. Netta, student in the class, ran one mile eight minutes. Who is the fastest runner with respect to his or her class? I hope that screams out for you. Z-score, right? Because whenever we're comparing between systems, the only way to compare is Z-score, right? Because elementary students are going to run much slower than junior high students who are going to run much slower than high school students. So just because Rachel, or let's say uh, Netta, is a fast, you know, pretty fast runner, she's a high school student. 
So she should be faster than junior high and elementary school students. So if we're going to really find out who's running the fastest relative to their classmates, we've got to calculate z-scores. See, whenever they talk about with respect to or relative to, that means z-scores for comparing different classification systems. So let's start with Rachel. Remember how z-score is computed? Score minus mean over standard deviation. So for Rachel, here's Rachel up here. We'll do, but I should have kept Rachel in the blue since we rewrite that. Score minus mean over standard deviation. Rachel got a, um, what's, what's Rachel's score? She, Rachel... Uh, eight minutes. So eight minutes minus the mean, the average, 11 minutes. Over the standard deviation, three. Minus three over three. She's minus one, which is good. You want negative. That means because her time is lower. Her time is one standard deviation below average. So that's good. She's running faster than average, one standard deviation faster than average. That's that's good. Next comes Kinji. Kinji, same kind of formula. Z score for Kinji. Score minus mean over standard deviation. What's Kinji score? 8.5 minutes. Minus what's the mean for the junior high kids? Nine minutes. Over standard deviation, two minutes. Minus 0.5 over 2. If you divide that and you calculate, you get minus 0.25. So that's one quarter. Uh, so Kinji's time is 0.25. So a quarter of a standard deviation below average. So Kin Kinji's coming in faster than average, below average time. right? Her time is, is lower, quicker, but only a little bit. Not even one whole standard deviation below. Finally... We've got Netta, so same kind of formula for Netta. Score minus mean over standard deviation. So Netta, uh, what was her score? She ran in eight minutes, eight minute mile, eight minute, eight minus, what's the average for that group? Seven minutes over the standard deviation, four minutes. So that's one-fourth. That's positive 0.5. So Netta is slower than average. Her time is 0.25 standard deviations, right? 0.25 standard deviations. The z-score is, is how many standard amounts. She's 0.25 standard deviations above average. That's not good. Her time is above the average time. She's slow. So who's the fastest? It's, it's Rachel. Her z-score is the lowest z-score, meaning her time is the lowest compared to her class, uh, classmates. Rachel is the lowest z-score. So she probably has the potential to be the fastest runner among the groups, even though she's right now not the fastest. She's only in elementary school. So we are in question six. So it's got all these numbers. Basically... Um, so step one, put, put all these numbers in your calculator. This is all put them in the calculator in L1. And then remember what to do. You hit stat. You go over to calc, one there, and then just hit enter. If your calculator says list, you want to put L1. And if it says frequency list, you want to leave this blank here. And then hit enter. And you'll get all the information you need. So I just did it in my calculator. I'm getting a mean. This, that's the uh, X bar. It's coming out 198. Um, so there we go on that. The sample standard deviation, that's the S sub X. My calculator is showing 23.88. I don't know how far they want you to round. Oh, it says whole number. So that would round to 24. Um, okay, first quartile, if you, if, you, if you go down arrow, if you hit the down arrow, you'll see the Q1, that's the first quartile, comes out 180. 
the median, it'll say mead. If you keep going down there, it'll say mead. And I'm telling, I'm saying mine's showing 192. Keep going down, it'll say third quartile, 225. And now it says find the weight, find the weight that is two standard deviations below the mean. So if you take the mean, so you want me to take the mean, they want me to subtract two times the standard deviation. So I'll take the mean. What's the mean? The mean is right here. So 198 minus 2 times the standard deviation, which is right there. All right, 24, 198. You get 198 minus 48, which is 150. That's two standard deviations below. See, below is how we knew we had to subtract. Subtract, because it's two standard deviations below the mean. A new player, let's jump down to this question. A new player is 215 pounds, wants to join the team. How many standard deviations from the mean is the new player? Whenever they say how many standard deviations, that's z-score. So you need to know that. That's what z-score is is how many standard deviations. So they want the z-score. Remember the z-score formula? It's mean. Oh, no, not mean. <laughs> Let me get it straight. It's the score minus the mean over the standard deviation. So it's the score. What it, his, He weighs 215 minus the mean. What's the mean? 198. Over the standard deviation. What's standard deviation? 24. So I'm getting um, Oh, when you type it into your calculator, by the way, type it in like this, minus 198. Hit enter and then hit divided by 24 and enter again. So you gotta hit enter after you do the subtraction, hit enter, then do the divide, then hit enter again. I'm getting um Point seven one. Point seven one. Let me double check. Is that right? Um, yeah, point seven one. There we go. Okay, so question number seven. They're saying uh, the statistics below shows you know information from a college. Um, I don't know if you know what all these symbols are. This. Uh, mu here, this, this means the mean. That symbol, that funny looking symbol, is mean. This symbol is standard deviation. Okay, so a sample of eight years are taken. What is the best prediction for the numbers of these years that have fewer than 1014 full-time equivalent students? That's what FTES stands for. How many students, full-time equivalent students? Basically, how many students are going full-time at their college? So, so this is, um, oh, yes, yeah, it says right here, full-time equivalent students for Lake Tahoe Community College. This is the history of Lake Tahoe Community College. Their average over their history is 1,000 full-time equivalent students. Their median is 1,014. The standard deviation is 474, the first quartile, third quartile. This is a history of 29 years in is 29 years. So if you grab eight years out of those 29 years, what is the best prediction for how many, the number of these years, how many years, that's a fancy way of saying, how many years have fewer than 1014? Well, remember, where are they getting that 1014? You see it right here? 1014 is the median. It's the middle. 1014 is the middle. So that means half of the years, half of the years are going to be below 1014 full-time equivalent students, and half of the years, of their 29 years, are going to be above, about. About half below and half above, because that's midway. So if you grab eight years at random, how many would you expect would be fewer below? Four. Half of them. Because that's what it means for 1014 to be the median. It's right in the middle. So if we grabbed a sample of eight years at random, 
our prediction would be that four of those years, you know, if you just went back in history and grabbed eight years at random, probably our best prediction is that half of those years, four, would have fewer than 10, 14 students because that's, that's the median. That's, that's half of them have below that, half have above that. That's what it means to be the median. 25% of all the years had at least how many students? Well, for the end, the next one's kind of similar. For answering those two questions, we have to really understand what's being talked about. Let me go to a fresh screen here. What's being talked about with uh, this quartile? Imagine like a football game. Let me just lay out the whole football game. This is halftime, right? This is the end of the first quarter, end of the third quarter. So they're telling me the end of the first quarter is 528.5, and the end of the third quarter is 1447.5. Half time, uh, the median is 1014. 1014. Okay. Um, all right, so what does that mean? So this, this is 25% of all the years. This is, right, these are all quarters. They're all, like, it's a football game. 25% of the game is the first quarter, second quarter, third quarter, fourth quarter, right? Okay, so they're asking me, 25% of all the years had at least what number? It would be here, this. 1447.5, right? Because 25% had at least 1447.5 or more. At least means this or more, doesn't it? So one fourth, 25% of all the years were at 1447.5 or more. They were here or more or to the right, weren't they? What about the next question? Next one says 25% uh, of all the years had at most, that would be here. Because at most, what does at most mean? It means this or below. Isn't that what at most means? If I say at most 528, that means it's 528 or more, right? The most is 528. So at most 528 means 528 or below. And that is, again, 25% of all the years had at most 528.5. What percent of all the years had between 1014 and 1447.5? Well, 1014, right? 1014 and 144.7.5, 25%. 25%. What is the population standard deviation? It's right here, 474. That's the standard deviation. That's just a weird Greek symbol for it. How many standard deviations above the mean is the third quartile? Okay, remember, whenever they say how many standard deviations, that means z-score, just like on the last problem, right? Um, where was it? Uh, here's the last problem. Down here, when they said... How many standard deviations is z-score? How many standard deviations is z-score? Put that on your 3 by 5 card for the exam so you're ready to go. How many standard deviations? So that's z-score. So I'm going to bring this up here and calculate z-score. Remember what that is? That's score minus mean over standard deviation. So that's score. So they said is the... Third quartile. Where's the third quartile? Uh, third quartile, right here. So 1447.5 minus the mean. What's the mean? Oh, this, I didn't tell you. This is the mean. This is a funny symbol for mean. Don't confuse the mean with the median. Over the standard deviation, 474. So do that on your calculator. Remember, when you do this on your calculator, you have to do 1447.5 minus 1,000, and then you got to hit enter first, and then go divide by 474 and hit enter to get the right answer. So I'm going to do that with you right now. I'm getting 0.94, 
It says round your answer to three decimal places. Okay, so I'm getting point nine four four when I do that. There we go. Okay, so here's question eight. They're asking us, um, this is a psychologist who surveyed single people, asking them how many times they went on a date last year. Remember, this is the mean. This is the standard deviation. Um, okay, so what is the IQR? Remember what IQR is? Interquartile range, it's Q3 minus Q1. You want to have that formula on your... Uh, for the exam. So Q3, this is Q3 right here, and this is Q1 right here. So it's 18 minus 7.5, which is what? 11.5. So, and on a box plot, let me be clear, right? We have this, we have this, we have this. So this is the Q1, Q3, median, so we're saying this is the Q1, which is at what, um, 7.5. This is the Q3, which is 18. This is the median, which is at 11. So let's answer their questions. The, what is the IQR? Is it 7.5 to 18? Yeah, that's what it is. It's from 7.5 to 18. It's the range between Q1 and Q3. Um, is it 6.2 to 14? No. Is it between 0 and 18? No. It's between 7.5 and 18. Um, is it the lower half of the data? No. Is it the range between sigma and mu? No. Is it the range that contains the middle half of the data? Yes. Right? Because remember, remember this box plot thing breaks the data into four quarters for 25 percent chunks so this box which is q1 to q3 which is the iqr is the middle 25 percent 25 percent 50 percent of the data middle half of the data yes that's true Okay, question nine. Forty randomly selected students were asked the number of pairs of sneakers they owned. So, frequency, remember, means how many? So it looks like two students have one pair of sneakers. Five students have two pair of sneakers. Eight students have three pair of sneakers. Twelve students have four. Another twelve have five. Nobody has six pair of sneakers. And one student has seven pair of sneakers. Okay, well, then they're going to ask us a whole bunch of questions. You can see them here. You know, mean, median, standard deviation, first quartile, third quartile. So how do we get all that stuff? Well, basically, we've got to... Um, well, I, I can leave that right there. We've got to put this in our calculator. But... This is a frequency table. So remember, this is going to be L1, and this is going to be L2. So you put in, so step one, put in L1 and L2, the data sets. Right? Put this in L1, put this in L2. Step two, now you hit stat, go over to calc, do one variable, hit enter. Well, actually, it depends if you have the new kind or the old kind. You'll need to either do L1, L2, or you'll need to hit enter, and then it'll tell you list and frequency list, and you put in L1 and L2 there, depending if you have the new or the old type. Now, how do you get L1 and L2 on your screen? I don't know if you remember, but you hit second and one. And to get L2, you hit second and two. Same thing here. You know, second and one. Second and two. You know, second is a button on the calculator. Hit the second button and then hit one or two to put on the L1, L2. And after you got all that, hit another enter, and you should get all the data you need. So I just did it 
also. Here's what I got. I got the mean, um, which is the x bar, 3.775. Oh, it wants two places. Two places. So that'll be 3.78. Remember how to round? You circle the place you're going to stop on. The second place, look one to the right. If it's five or more, go up. The median, you have to go hit the down arrow to get down to the median. It tells me the median is four. Standard deviation, that's the S sub X. That is 1.29. The first quartile, got to go down Q1. That's a three. Third quartile, go down to Q3. That's five. And where are we at? And now... What percent of the respondents had fewer than four pair of sneakers? What percent fewer than four? What does fewer than four mean? Three or two or one or zero? Isn't that what that means? If I said I've got fewer than four pair of sneakers, that means I've got three or two or one or zero pair of sneakers. Well, how many is that? Let's go back to the list. How many again? Three or two or one or zero. So three or two or one pair of sneakers. Nobody has, well, I don't think anybody had no sneakers, right? So three or two or one. How many people? That's eight people, five, right? Because this is how many over here, isn't it? So how many? Eight, five, and two. So eight plus, getting a little scribbly there, 8 plus 5 plus 2, which is, what, 15. 15 people have 3, 2, or 1. Uh, getting scribbly. Have 3, 2, or 1, you know, less than 4. Pair of sneakers, okay. What? But they said what percent? What do you always do to figure out percentage? You got to take that 15 and you got to put it over the total number of students. What's the total number of students? 40. So it's 15 over 40. Divide that on your calculator. I'm getting 0.375. Move it two places. 37.5%. And then it says, in case we get that, that's a tricky one. Let's go to the last question. Get a fresh screen here. 67.5% of all respondents had at most, whenever they say at most, you start at the bottom. You have to start at the bottom. Why do I have to start at the bottom? Well, if I'm going to get 67.5% that have at most, i got to start at the bottom. I'll show you as we go. So getting back to the original list here, maybe I should just do a fresh screen right here. Okay, so 67.5% um, at most. Well, let's start right here. Let me let me just add up two and five. I'm just gonna start guessing. This is this is how many people, right? How many people? So how many people had at most two sneakers? Right? If somebody said to me, How many how many students had at most two sneakers? Well, I would go two plus five. That's seven people, right? The two here and the five here, seven people. What percentage is that? Well, that's 7 out of 40. Divide that on your calculator, and I'm getting a 0.175, which is 17.5%. What percent did they want? 67.5. Let's go a little, let's go another row. Let's go a little further down. Let's go all the way down to here now and say, at most, 3. If I said, how many have you, you know, Raise your hands, you students. All of you that have at most three, that means three or less, doesn't it? If you have at most three, then three is the most, but you could have less. That's what at most three means. 
three, three sneakers or two sneakers or one sneaker. If you have three sneakers or two sneakers or one sneakers, pair of sneakers at home, then you have at most three. How many people have that? Eight, five, and two. Eight, five, and two, which is 15 people out of 40. What percentage is that? 0.375, which is 37.5%. No, we're supposed to hit 67.5. Keep going. Let's go up to this. We'll say at most four. So if you have at most four sneakers, sneakers you could have one, two, three, or four. If you add all that up, that's two, five, eight, and 12, which is what, 27 people. 27 out of 40. That's looking promising. Yep, there it is, 0.675 which is 67.5%. That's what we wanted. In other words, 67.5% of all the students have at most four, meaning four or less, right? They have at most, the most they have is four. They might have less, at most four. Four or three or two or one sneakers at home. How many people is that? It's all these, whoops, I went too far, huh? It's all these people which adds up to be 27 people, 27 out of 40, is 67.5%. So 67.5% of all the students have at most four sneakers. Um, how, at most how many pair of sneakers? At most four. There we go.